congratulations on Snowden. I saw it the other day. It was brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and couldn't be more timely, I thought, you know, with uh, James Clapper resigning yesterday particularly, and, of course, he who must not be named uh, <laughs> getting to victory. Mm -hmm. um, were you interested in the story of Snowden and, you know, privacy and mass events before coming to the project, or did that come once you started getting involved? Yeah, the truth is that uh, when Oliver Stone first offered me this job, um, First, I was just excited because I'm such a fan of Oliver Stone's movies. But uh, yeah, the, the next thought I had was, okay, he wants me to play Edward Snowden. I'm pretty sure I've heard that name before. Uh, I think he might have leaked something. But which one was he and what exactly did he do and why? I, I really didn't know. Um, so uh, yeah, so I had some learning to do um, before committing to, to doing the job. Mm. And now I hear that you're giving your earnings, or you gave all your earnings to the film to facilitate the conversation about technology and democracy in the relationship between the two. Mm -hmm. um, so I take it you've got very much more into it now. Yeah. Um, uh, but what does that really entail, f facilitating the conversation? Uh, well, the majority of, of the donation went to the ACLU, uh, the American Civil Liberties mm -hmm. Union, which mm -hmm. is a uh, 100-year-old nonprofit legal organization that... Um, uh, basically, when the government is doing something that violates the Constitution, the ACLU tends to be the one that sues them. Right. Uh, and they're on the front lines of, of this debate of, uh, you know, privacy and uh, security online, digital rights. Mm. Um, then um, some of the money went to uh, uh, fund a production, a partnership between the ACLU and Hit Record, um, okay. which is uh, the company I started. And we made a series of short films about... Uh, sort of the intersection between technology and democracy mm. and uh, just kind of stimulating that conversation you know I, I think a big part of what Snowden wanted to do by getting this out there was to say hey it's not for me to say whether mass surveillance is right or wrong but uh, the people should be having that conversation because before Edward Snowden uh, the government had just put these programs into place sort of outside of the democratic process. There was no checks and balances. And even to the point where, uh, uh, at one point, the director of national intelligence, a guy named James Clapper, he was, he was called before Congress and asked by a senator, is the NSA doing this? Is the NSA collecting millions of records on American citizens? And, and James Clapper lied and said no. Um, so that kind of secrecy is really undemocratic and uh, again, I think it's debatable whether we, sh how much privacy we should or shouldn't have, um, but that's a debate that the people should be having. That's you know a conversation that, that's worth stimulating. That's what Snowden wanted to do, and so that's what we were trying to um, you know facilitate by making those short films. Mm. And overall, so then you do agree with what Snowden did? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, very much so. And I, I look, I I am very confident that. Um, Decades from now, when we look back on what Edward Snowden did, um, history will be very kind to him, and, and we will generally all feel grateful uh, for what he did. And, and um, certainly there are those uh, these days who uh, seek to discredit him. Um, that pretty much always happens when someone stands up to uh, authority or power. Um, like, you can look at examples from history. Uh, one example is um, there's a thing in the United States called the Pentagon Papers, mm -hmm. which is a leak very much like Edward Snowden's leaks. Um, a man named Daniel Ellsberg uh, took documents um, that pertained to the Vietnam War at the time and, and delivered them to the New York Times. And uh, it was a big turning point in, in the public's opinion of that war. Um, and at the time, uh, Daniel Ellsberg's critics said the exact same things about him that they say today about Edward Snowden. They say he threatened national security. They say he cost American lives. They say they accused him of being a Russian spy. Um, none of that stuff turned out to be true. And uh, nowadays, we do look kindly on, on Daniel Ellsberg. Yes. I mean, you met, you met Edward Snowden as well, didn't you, before filming? Yes. Um, what, was that, what was it like meeting the man that you were going to portray on screen? What was it like then knowing that he could watch your, or will watch your uh, mm -hmm. portrayal. Yeah, it, it's really, it's different when you're playing someone who's uh, a real guy. Uh, you have a lot more to go on, actually. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, there's less stuff that you have to just make up out of thin air. 
Um, and, and that's inspiring as an actor. Uh, it was interesting meeting him because he's always trying to take the attention off of himself personally and put the attention on the causes that, that he's fighting for. Um, but because I was going to play him, uh, I was just disobeying that. And, and I was very focused on him personally, on mm -hmm. how he would sit or stand or walk or talk or, uh, you know, how he ate and things like that. Those are little details that, that are really useful for me mm -hmm. as an actor. You really do get the voice down. It's quite, um, oh, well, at first it's disconcerting, but then you're uh, used to it. But yeah. how did it take you long to get that? To get that right? Yeah, I worked hard on that. Um, and and it's it's more than I, I, want, I did want to sound like him, but I, I think there's more to it than just sounding like him. And, and that's, I think his voice is very telling about who he is. He speaks in a very deliberate way. He chooses his words very carefully. He enunciates. And, uh, and I think that's consistent with how he pulled this whole caper off, um, you know, he didn't do this in a fit of passion. Um, he very carefully chose documents um, to take that, um, that were important to this debate. And he picked journalists, very particular journalists that he thought would be qualified to decide whether that information was beneficial or not mm -hmm. to make public. And he orchestrated the whole thing very deliberately. Um, so, you know, talking in a very deliberate manner, I think, really played into the kind of spy thriller plot of, of the whole movie. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about Hit Record, your, mm -hmm. um, your online collaborative production company. You've, you've had it for a few years now. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that companies such as yours and even, you know, just Hollywood in general has a responsibility as the creative community to kind of hold a mirror up to the society we live in, to, the, to, lead, to our leaders. Mm -hmm. Is that a duty there? Sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not the sexiest thing to call it a responsibility. No, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I do think so. Um, I mean, uh, my answer is yes. Uh, and and I, I do... I also though think, I think that uh, movies or stories to me are more entertaining when they have something to say. Uh, that's just maybe my personal taste. And, and I know some folks, and, and of course I also have a taste for the kind of movies that you just go and you watch and you turn your mind off. And I, I think there's a place for that too. Um, but especially nowadays, you know, you're bringing up sort of our, our contemporary climate and situation uh, politically. Um, yeah, nowadays, probably more than ever, I think artists will feel compelled to and audiences will have an appetite for stories that are reflective of what's going on and, you know, where our freedom is at. Um, and, and certainly the Edward Snowden story is, uh, is a good example. Mm, so less Marvel ad adaptations, more new writing. Uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> No, you didn't. Fair enough. And one last question. Will you now be covering up the webcam on your laptop? I, uh, I do sometimes. I, I don't have one on my laptop right now just because it fell off. Uh, I need to get another one. But um, yeah. Uh, but you, and, and by the way, it's worth noting it's not just because of the NSA or GCHQ. Um, there's all sorts of people out there with the capability to spy on your phone or your computer. And a lot of those people have ill intentions. That's why Snowden and others talk a lot about um, fortifying our devices, our hardware and our software, why encryption is a good thing. Um, it's not just because we don't want the NSA spying on us. It's because that's just moving forward as a society more and more integrated and reliant on this technology. We're going to need to have it be secure. We're just going to need that. Mm. Well, thank you. It's all very interesting and scary. And <laughs> measure. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks. Likewise. Cheers.